So as I have told you in the previous sessions that by now are all the discussion related to ArcGIS tools uh, regarding the ArcGIS concept has been completed by now. And what we are discussing, they are like a general discussion. Okay, In today's turn, what we are discussing is GIS design issues. And these design issues are not very specific to GIS. It is a general design issues which is faced by any of the software project. Okay. So this is more or less like a generic discussion over here. Um, this one will be useful if we have to implement our GIS in any of the organization. Okay. So let's see. Whenever you want to design any project, like you have done the BTEC project, PhD students have done BTEC as well as AMTEC thesis work. These thesis work or, or project are more or less same thing. Okay, So when you are creating any project, making any thesis work, there are some of the general steps that need to be done. Okay, Like uh, when a student comes for the thesis work, what we say, you know, first go for a literature review. A broad topic will be given to them. Like suppose you have to work on the GIS application on the house hunting problem. There are some people who are interested in purchasing a house. How can you support them with the help of a GIS? Or suppose there is a there are the people who want to send their children to a school. So how GIS could be useful to those children, to those parents? So this is like a broad overview that in this particular field you need to work. Thereafter, what we ask from the students that you know go to the literature, read the research papers. From those research paper, read about what type of technologies are in use, what type of work hasn't been done, what we say research gap, okay? What is, there is still a gap in the data or in the research work. Based on a thorough literature review, research gap is identified. And based on those research gap, research objectives are formulated. Once a research objective is formulated, we go for a methodology design. Based on that methodology, the work is conducted that involves the data collection, database preparation, performing of analysis. Then once you get the results, you need to make a discussion of those results, analyze those results. And this is how this whole process is done. Just like that way, in GIS also, when there is any GIS project, there is a typical step or any of the software project or uh, project design, we have a set of work. Like first of all, it starts with the identification of the problem and its scope. This is the first and the most important step, whether it is a project, whether it is a thesis work. What we tell to the student, although it is quite boring to go to the literature to read the work, but if you don't do this work thoroughly, you will not be able to identify the correct research gap. You will not be able to identify or you will not be able to formulate the correct objectives. And once the things are not done properly at this stage, whatever you will do at the next stages, it will not give you the correct output because you have not identified the gap properly. You have not formulated the research objectives for properly. Coming back to the GIS, here, whenever a problem is given to the analyst, they have to properly identify the problem. When a client comes to a project um, manager or comes to any of the organization, they have certain requirement. And even client doesn't know what does he want sometimes. Like, suppose I want to do a shopping, like suppose I want to purchase like this one is a winter season, I want to purchase a jacket. Okay, So this is a very general thing, I want to purchase a jacket. When you go to a shop, there are so many jackets, there are so many different combination of fabrics there. 
in uh, there are different types of styles that are available okay so when we go to a shop the salesman used to ask some of the questions like what is your budget range okay and again the people say nahi nahi kuch acha dikha dijiye there is nothing like what is the budget range cannot be said means cannot be identified by this type of statement this is a generic statement i want to see something good okay and people used to say no no there is no budget limit humko acha saman chahiye paise ka koi wo nahi hai and uske baad jab dukandar aapko acche se acha saman dikhana shuru karega aur finalize karne lagenge log to kahenge nahi nahi ye to bahut mehanga hai aur hamare budget ke bahar hai तो ये डे टू डे प्रॉब्लम जो आप देखते हैं जो आप खुद करते हैं क्रिएट भी करते हैं और फेस भी करते हैं कई बार कि पता ही नहीं है सामान लेना है अच्छे कपड़े खरीदने हैं शूज खरीदना है मोबाइल खरीदना है कुछ खरीदना है लेकिन स्पेसिफिकेशन ही नहीं पता कि क्या खरीदना है और उसी का नतीजा होता है कि कई बार आप शॉप में जाएंगे तो लोग सामान देखते रहते हैं देखते रहते हैं दे डू नॉट कम टू अ फाइनल कंक्लूजन यहाँ पे भी ये प्रॉब्लम आती है कि क्लाइंट डजेंट नो एग्जैक्टली व्हाट डज ही और शी वांट्स देयरफॉर द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप ऑफ एनी ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट इज प्रॉब्लम आइडेंटिफिकेशन दैट नीड टू बी डन वेरी थॉरली सो दैट देयर विल बी अ प्रॉपर स्टेटमेंट प्रॉपर रिटर्न डॉक्यूमेंट दैट स्टेट्स व्हाट डज अ क्लाइंट एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम अ सिस्टम एंड वॉट डज द डेवलपर प्रोवाइड टू द क्लाइंट in software we say it as an srs software requirement specification it is a signed document it is signed by both client as well as the developer and this one is like a written document so that later on if client is not satisfied okay i am not liking a system again this one is a generic thing i do not like this system the developer can ask what do you not like in the system like these are the list of functionalities that you have asked which one is not satisfying by this system similarly if developer is saying that, that no no i have provided you everything but if that person has not given all the functionalities in the system that could also get identified with the help of this document so in any of the project design we have to go through this this very first step requirement analysis as well as feasibility analysis like many times our expectations are not even feasible so instead of putting all our effort into that one we have to first perform the feasibility analysis when it is successfully passed through the feasibility analysis the next step is requirement specification requirement specification is a long step it need to be done very correctly because any mistake at this stage will finally affect the output in problem identification there are several methods through which the problem could be identified two of the methods are discussed over here first one is the rich picture and second one is the root definition so as i told you earlier many times client doesn't know or developer doesn't understand what the client expect from the system therefore such type of methods are used in rich picture it is like a comic book okay i think so all of you have read the comic book there are several books like uh, chacha choudhary billu nagraj so many of them are there tintin and others so if you read those books there are certain symbols that are typically used isn't it somebody is saying okay somebody is saying is so it will be shown by this type of speech bubble if somebody is thinking it is shown by such type of a cloud so these are the typical symbols that are used in the comic books here also it is like a comic book structure the different symbols are used what the different different people are saying is given by the speech bubble what they are thinking it is given by such type of cloud if there is any conflict in the opinion okay if there is any conflict in the opinion then it is shown by a cross sort if there is any external observer in the system they are shown by the eyes okay you can see four eyes over here community property developer local authority competitor real estate agency so this is the real uh, sorry rich picture this rich picture is developed by the developer and there can be if there is a small project there will be one rich picture if there is a large project 
more than one rich picture could be created and later on it will be merged together so that it will give you a complete scene so first read this diagram what it is saying there are different role players like first of all there is a real estate agent what he is telling now tell me what type of area would you like to live what he is thinking i don't have much in that type of area i will just have to convince them i need another sale hit another sale to hit my monthly target there is a couple who gone for the purchasing house hunting so this uh, lady is saying we would like to live in a nice neighborhood close to a school in the countryside and away from the highway so there are three condition that is that are put over here first one is proximity to the school second one inside the countryside means away from the urban area third one away from the highway okay so these are the three conditions that are put over here now this person is thinking why does she is saying away from the highway i need to go to the work so it will be away from my workplace so there is a conflict even between the customers there is a conflict of opinion okay then there is another set of buyers it is shame that they do not show us a map of noise pollution for the airport means there is another set of requirement first one is proximity to school proximity to countryside and away from the highway another requirement is coming over here is of noise pollution third one we need to know the type of the people who live in the area this third condition is based on the the another set of people are giving the condition based on the neighborhood okay so you can see that there are different home buyers even they are putting a conflicting requirement okay and see what the external observers are thinking okay so those people who are not involved in this selling and buying of the process but you can see what they are thinking over here like there is some local authority do you think we may should make our data available what if someone uses it to choose where to live and there is an accident we might be responsible some competitor real estate developer if they build this system they might have a competitive advantage therefore i suggest we don't give them our data property developers this is very interesting we need a better way to find out where to build new houses community we need to encourage people to come and live in our neighborhood we might get a new school so this is what this is the different this is how a rich picture is created there can be different players okay so client doesn't mean a single person there can be different people who get involved in this process like this one is the example of how hunting problem there will be a real estate agent there will be the home buyers apart from that there will be some external interest also so coming to the theory part a rich picture is a schematic view of the problem a gis project will address it represents the main components of the problem as well as any interaction that exists the rich picture for the house hunting problem is shown in the next slide a rich picture includes crosswords a crossword symbol express conflict it is used to indicate the difference between the home buyer and the real estate agents uh, there is a conflict since the motives of two group for system development are different the home buyer wishes to find house that best suits their need whereas the estate agent wishes to sell a house to gain commission eyes are used to represent external observers property developers interested in identifying new areas for housing development may be external observers speech bubbles personal or group opinions are indicated in speech bubbles the different priorities home buyers see for the system may be included in the rich picture in this way drawing the rich picture records various thought on paper and helps to organize ideas for a small scale application one individual may draw the rich picture a rich picture drawn by a project team will represent a consensus view of a problem reached by all the project participants a single composite rich picture can be achieved by asking all members of the team to draw their own rich pictures 
these are then discussed and combined to create a single picture that reflects the view of all parties the development of a rich picture should not be rushed particularly if it is trying to reflect an unstructured problem yeah unstructured problem means you know in the starting lectures we have learned about three types of management problems first one is structured problem second one is semi structured problem third one is unstructured or ill structured problem ill structured or unstructured problem are those problems whose solution is not well known like for a structured problem it is like any of the regular problem the user know that this type of problem will be faced like if you want to identify the shortest true this one is a structured problem because it is a well defined problem that there at this particular time there will be a lot of traffic congestion and other things so it is a regular problem it is faced on a daily basis the solution provider or the decision makers are very well aware of the problem but suppose if somebody is trying to build something completely new okay like completely new type of website completely new type of product in that case it will be the example of unstructured pro uh, unstructured problem as you know that the gis is known as dss decision support system and such type of system are basically created to support in the decision making of such type of semi structured or unstructured problem okay and in case of unstructured problem even the people doesn't know the client doesn't know exact problem so later on we will discuss about the project development models there you will find different types of model like waterfall model then there is a prototype model through which we deal with this type of problem after the rich picture the second type of um, method of problem identification is root definition root definition in root definition basically different definitions of the problem is taken like uh what will be a problem for the real estate agent like real estate state agent wants a gis that help them to maximize the house sale for the home buyers what will be the gis for them a system to identify and rank possible homes so this is what the root definition is it is given by different people and once it is obtained means all the players who are involved in that gis once it is taken thereafter one root definition is created once the uh, once the definition from all the stock stakeholders has been collected after that one common root definition is given for the system like gis is a system that identifies problem for sale identifies properties for sale which meet the requirements of individual home buyers so this is the such type of common definition root definition is needed in any of the system once the problem identification phase is over the next step is choose and design a data model what is data model already you have learned two types of data model conceptually when we speak there is a raster data model and a vector data model once the problem identification is done we need to identify which data is required and how we are going to store that data in which particular data model we are going to use which conceptual model is used and once that thing is fixed the next thing is which physical model we are going to use okay so this one is the next step because in gis the data is very important the database creation is a very long process all the analysis is based on this one therefore after the problem identification the next step is selection of data selection of data model conceptual data model thereafter the physical data model and once this is done we need to design data has been done the next step is to design the analysis okay for the design of analysis there is a cartographic modeling cartographic modeling although um, in some more detailed method is given over here but basically what you people are doing in the uh, questions that were given to you like fire hydrant question like uh, auto accidents question what you are doing we are basically doing a cartographic modeling okay we are not doing it may not be doing in exactly the same manner 
you are not doing it exactly in the same set of steps but more or less cartographic modeling is just like that okay so as it is given over here there are the four steps in the cartographic modeling number 1 identify the map layers or spatial data set required in the problem i have suggested you to first of all write down what data is given to you what is the input data isn't it so in that case you have a problem here also when any project comes when any system need to be developed the first thing is we need to identify what data sets are required once they are identified before like in your case once you have written down the required data or the input data the next step is you used to think what will be the solution before making the flow chart you do not start directly making the flow chart first we what we used to do we used to think what we will do in order to solve this question we in order to give the solution which meet all the criteria so for that purpose second step is used that says use natural language to explain the process of moving from data available to solution okay so once we are done this thing means mentally although you are not doing it theoretically so once we have done this thing that this one is the input data i will do this 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 in order to achieve the final output so if you write down all that thing in a copy in the form of a means in normal natural language this would be the next step of cartographic modeling after that you create a flow chart so here also a flow chart is drawn to represent graphically the process described in the step number 2 in the context of map algebra this flow chart represent a series of equation you must solve in order to produce the answer to your spatial query means in different literature you will find different steps some of them will show them in a flow chart some of them will suggest you to draw it in the form of equation i will show you the example of this one and finally annotate this flow chart with the commands necessary to perform these operation within the gis you are using like reselect dissolve buffer all this so see see this particular flow chart if you see this flow chart this is one is same as the house hunting problem so what the customers were saying house hunting criteria identified must be close to a school live near a main road would like to live close to an urban area would like to live in an area with low crime rate okay from this one once the geographical criteria have been given the map will be shown like map showing school location in order to find it uh, in order to find the places which are in the close proximity to the school then must live near a main road so map showing the main road would like to live close to an urban area a map showing the urban centers would like to live in an area with a low crime rate so in this one they are showing another way like suppose you will not getting a crime map okay so they are showing that how the criteria is met that since they are not getting the crime rate they are using the insurance zones so map showing insurance zones as a surrogate measure for crime rate so this thing also happens many times we do not have a data exactly that data so we try to use another that type of data in order to accommodate that condition in a solution so once these map have been created gis procedures used to create map with show the proximity to all locations in the search area to either a school main road or urban center finally again a map showing proximity to school map showing proximity to main road map showing proximity to urban center gis procedure used to weigh importance of each map then 
composite map produced which provides a spatial picture of the suitability of all locations in the search area given the preference of the house hunter and then finally they are going to overlay all these zones and they have to decide to look at houses at this area yes then house hunting is done no then they will again go for the criteria analysis so is it is like the same thing is done but a lot of lot of detail okay to wahi kaam ho raha hai lekin usko bar bar wahi cheez ko alag alag step mein repeat karke yahan par bataya ja raha hai more or less pura process waisa hi chalta hai cartographic modeling mein kai bar isme kya kiya jata hai equations use kari jati hai dekhiye equation 1 from land use extract country side why because we will not get a single map where the urban non urban or country side information is given you will get a land use map on those land use map urban area might be given so from the land use map remove the urban area so if you perform the difference of the urban area you will get the country side location another one from road map spread road by distance basically you will perform a buffer and later on you will identify that area so by using such type of equations the same thing would get expressed it may or may not be used equation use of equation is not necessary and finally finally you will get this type of graph okay this type of flow chart so in this one you will have a land use map you will use exact the term like extract countryside road map proximity to to the road thereafter overlay is performed thereafter again extraction is performed again overlay is done so this is the whole procedure whole procedure which is explained over here then this is the procedure of cartographic modeling that we are already doing thereafter we have to see the implementation issues okay so once this is a general process this is how we create any of the gis project problem identification thereafter data data issues like identification of data which model we are going to use how we are going to use the physical model and other things once data part is deal you need to give the procedure of analysis which analysis you are going to perform on the data set so that final solution could be obtained then there are the implementation issues like when you are implementing any of the gis we need to justify the thing okay one of the important thing is justification of investment when somebody is putting a money on that thing they need a justification that why we are going to use that thing okay like the questions are given over here what will be the benefit of introducing a gis how will gis help to improve the organization's effectiveness what will be the cost of new gis will the expected benefits outweigh the anticipated cost and so on there are the different methods through which the gis cost could be justified one very traditional method is cost benefit analysis you may be aware of this method in cost benefit analysis basically we or uh, the developers used to think what will be the cost and what will be the benefit means what will be the expenditures in any of the project and what will be the gains of any system once these cost and benefits have been identified a graph is plotted over here on the x axis there will be a time on the y axis there will be a price or whatever money is involved there will be two plots over here two graphs over here one is showing the expenditure costs and second one is the benefits that are gained from the system so this is how this whole graph has been plotted the point at which the benefits intersect the cost it is considered as the starting of payback time okay in this case the benefit is going to increase than the expenditures in cost benefit graph creation the first it starts with listing all type of costs now if you consider the cost they can be a direct cost they can be a tangible cost they can be indirect or intangible cost 
Similarly, for the benefits also, there can be tangible or intangible benefits. The initial phase is very difficult to do because first we need to know about the cost. Now cost can be, as you can see over here, several costs are listed over here, like hardware cost, software cost. If there is no software exist in the system, we need to develop the software. So the software development cost, if we are purchasing any software and we need to change them according by our requirement, means if I want to customize the software, there will be a customization cost. Then there will be some consumable cost like printer, paper, and other things. Over the time, you need to upgrade the software for that purpose. Again, there will be a cost. Then the person who is coming for the upgradation over the time for the maintenance purpose, Again, there will be a cost. Then there will be the communication networks. If internet is required in that case, again, there will be a cost. If data is created, maintained, updated, there will be a cost. Then the staff related costs like their insurance, administration, security, training, renting. Then with uh, which type of method we are using if there is any pilot project, benchmarking, cost benefit analysis, consultancy, if any of these things have been done, again, we need some cost. So these are the costs that could be easily identified and quantified. But suppose there is a, there's a lot of noise at the workplace that is affecting the efficiency of the workforce. This one is also a cost, but it is an intangible indirect cost. How we will identify that cost, how we will give a monetary value to that one. Because in cost benefit analysis, when you are plotting a graph, a specific monetary value need to be given to all the cost and all the benefits. So how, what cost will be given for the person who is suffering from the noise, who is, there, there is a lot of heating at that place, the weather is not good. How we will find, how we will find the monetary value of that one. If the workforce is not motivated, that leads to the poor working how we are going to give a value to that one. So this is the difficulty of the cost benefit analysis. Coming to the second part, which is the benefit part. This one is even more difficult to quantify, like reduction in the cost of information production and provision. Fewer staff required, there is no problem in that one. If the fewer staff is required, the change in the salary, you know, the difference in the salary could get calculated and it will be the saving for that organization. Nowadays, a lot of digital products are available and we do not need to store the hard copy things. This is a very big issue in the institutes because we have a limited space. And if there is a limited space and if we are getting a lot of maps and other devices over there, where we are going to store, whether we need to rent that thing or not. So lesser space requirement will again lead to the saving, which will be a benefit. Now, saving time for any of the repetitive task, routine task, it will be the saving. Now, the second part, improvement in the effectiveness, like faster provisioning of information, greater range of information services provided, information more readily available, up-to-date information available. These all are the benefit of the system. How we are going to quantify that one is an issue. Then another benefit which is given over here, new range of output maps, tables, etc., better quality output. So these all are the direct benefit. Indirect benefit could be improved information sharing, better informed decision making, stronger competitive ability, making better motivated workforce. These all are the indirect benefits that are involved in any of the system. So this is one of the problem with the cost benefit analysis that how we are quantifying these things. But there's one important thing that need to be seen the graph of this GIS project. In any of the GIS project, you will find that initial cost is very high. And this involves the database creation. Okay, Some of the Authors, some of the researchers have said that, like according to the borough, 40% of time and money of any GIS project involved is involved in the database creation. 
another researcher huxop says that it is up to 90% sometimes in the cost that is involved in the database creation so one thing is very clear that in the gis project the database creation is a very big task it will take a lot of time as well as it will take a lot of money also so that's why you are finding this type of graph over here after the database creation again you will not find that the cost that the expenditure is going towards the zero no it is it will never go to the zero there will be a lifelong expenditure in any in the maintenance of any of the And there was some to at my end. Uh, my audio is okay now. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we were discussing about. As I was telling you, a major cost is involved in the database creation and the maintenance part. So it will never be the zero. The cost will never be zero in the GIS project. So one of the method is doing, or in one of the method of justifying the investment in GIS is done by the 
cost benefit analysis there is one another technique is called benchmarking and this benchmarking is not for the justification of investment it is used in decision making okay benchmarking is a technique that is used to help with decision about which software package to select okay so how this benchmarking takes place you know like suppose if you want to purchase anything how you will purchase that thing like suppose as i was giving you earlier the example of jacket so if you want to purchase a jacket you will go to the market visit three to four shops see the available range of jacket what are what are the different styles what are the different colors that are going on what about the fabric what about the cap and all these things you will check in the three or four shops and then thereafter you will make a decision if you see the reverse method okay instead of going to the market if we invite the vendors at our own place then it is called a benchmarking in benchmarking the organization that want to purchase the software it will make a benchmarking test in this case they will invite the vendors at their place means three to four vendors at their own place they will give the list of the functions that they require from a gis the list of problem that need to be performed by the gis and then the user or the buyer will supply their own data on which they want to execute the things and the vendor will demonstrate the whole this whole analysis on their own system by showing their own software using the buyer's data they will demonstrate the analysis on their own system okay. so this is the benchmarking process with the help of benchmarking the comparison could be done at the same time you can see the user interface of all the softwares you can check the system documentation of all the softwares you will know whether your data will work on that software or not okay so this is what the benchmarking is basically it involves the vendors in this the vendor is called at the buyer side instead of reverse process in which the buyer go to the vendor site in this one the buyer vendor is are invited at the buyer site the data is given by the buyer the required analysis is told by the buyer the vendors will execute that one in front of the buyers and the buyers could do the comparison on the demonstration they can compare the user interface they can compare the documentation they could compare the speed and other things and later on they can make a decision the benchmarking could be a quantitative benchmarking or it can be a qualitative benchmarking both of things take place like qualitative as it is given over here in qualitative benchmarking the questions are like are functions actually present do they live up to the expectation are they easy to use okay so these all are the qualitative things like whether it is easy or not again it is not a quantitative thing it is a qualitative thing wherever there is an adjective it is like an qualitative things okay so in the qualitative part of the benchmarking it is necessary to evaluate the way the program handles the operations functions cannot be evaluated simply as present or absent overhead qualitative assessment functions are not at all necessary they may be sorry functions are not all equally necessary like necessary before any project product can be generated like digitizing necessary to some product but may not be for the other products like buffer zone generation necessary only to low priority project like nice to have okay then there can be quantitative benchmarking it asks does the proposed configuration have necessary capacity to handle the planned workload analysis of all results then establishes equations which can be used to predict performance on planned workload example if it takes the vendor 1 hour to digitize 60 polygons during the benchmark how many digitizers will be needed to digitize the planned 1.5 million polygons to be put in the system in one year so this is known in computer science as performance evaluation so such type of benchmarking could be 
done before purchasing any of the product now another thing is pilot system okay what is pilot system many times instead of applying the system or instead of applying it on the whole region we used to create a small region and basis of that one a pilot project is created okay so pilot project or system may be defined as the limited term use of gis using data for a small geographical area to test the planned application and demonstrate the capabilities it is a test run on a small scale system that may involve an investment of 5 to 10% of the total cost the system may have been leased from the vendor with an option to purchase should the project should the pilot project go well such a project provides the opportunity for an organization to test each potential application test user acceptance demonstrate facilities to improve awareness and acceptance and improve cost benefit analysis the pilot system may be selected after benchmarking over a pilot system will decrease the financial risk involved in a large scale gis project since it does not require the full commitment of a new full system initially however time and resources are still needed to ensure that the pilot system will be a successful test of the gis application you know uh, many times you may have used the software and it comes on a trial version isn't it so for a one month you can use that software and if you are happy with that one if you are satisfied with that software you can purchase that one so you can think pilot system something like that so that it will come with the functionalities and you cannot install it on on all the systems on a small number of systems like on a two to three systems it will get installed if the people are happy with that one if whatever cost and benefit analysis involved in that one is successful we can go ahead with the purchase of that system if the people are not satisfied it can get dis discarded okay so this is what the pilot system is a system that is used in a small geographical area and later on it will be implemented on the whole organization after that one there are the implementation strategies implementation strategies means that once a new system comes how we are going to implement that one okay there are the different methods through which we can remove the old system and implement the new system the very first one is direct conversion what is direct conversion like you can take the example of demonetization on a particular date on the 8th of november it was declared that from 9th onwards old 500 and 1000 notes will not be of use and new 2000 and 500 rupees will come in circulation this is what this is the example of direct conversion where old system has been stopped and new system has been started okay so what we say knee jerk approach or it is like a big bang approach over here where from a particular moment the old system will be removed and new system will come into the action if we see this type of conversion it is a little bit risky because user doesn't get the time to adapt to the new system if all of a sudden a new system comes okay like over the time in every organization there is a you there is a need to implement new system like uh, you can take the example of attendance initially it was done by the signature and later on it become biometric okay so this is the conversion process but suppose if one, on a one particular day the physical signature has been stopped and biometric system has been started so the developer also doesn't get a time to know about the problem like suppose there is a lot of workload and system get crashed because of that one so nobody get a time to adapt to the new system but the thing is that it is comparatively cheaper to the other approaches because there is just one system there will be no confusion there will be just a single system 
सके सो दिस इज वॉट द डायरेक्ट कन्वर्जन इज इट इज वेरी रिस्की बिकॉज पीपल डो नॉट गेट द टाइम टू अडॉप्ट टू द न्यू वन बट कंपेरेटिवली चीपर बिकॉज देर इज नो यूज ऑफ द ओल्ड सिस्टम in order to avoid the risk that is involved in the direct conversion another implementation strategy is used which is called the parallel conversion so it is clear from the name itself when we are saying a parallel conversion there will be parallelly two system will run one will be the old system one will be the new system okay many times in some of the website you will find a link to the old website new website you are watching but there can be another link which will move you to the older website in this case if a user is not able to understand something in the new system not able to find something in the new system they have an option they have an opportunity to go to the older one so the user will get a sufficient time to adapt into the new system if there is any problem in the new system even then the system the working will not be stopped because there is an option okay there is an option where the people can go so this one is called the parallel system and over the time when the people become used to to the new system slowly and slowly the old system will get removed and if there is any problem in the new system if it is not successful the old system could get again come into the function so the advantage is it is very less risky people get sufficient time to adapt to the new system but the problem is there will be a redundancy because whenever you are doing any update it need to be done at two places it will involve the cost of two system because you need to run two different system together so it will take a lot of money a lot of cost is involved in this one and uh, there is a redundancy because whenever there is a duplication of effort there will be a redundancy so there is a chances that one system will get updated new system get updated and old system will give you the old information in that case there will be a conflict okay many times you will say that you know political parties used to say that uh, a document is written in hindi as well as in english hindi document is saying something else english document is saying something else there is a conflict and because of the translation this thing is happening okay here also something like that is going on that there are two systems old and new system whatever any changes is taking place it need to be done on both the systems and if it is not done it will show the conflicting information so parallel system are comparatively very costly but they are useful when there is a lot of risk that is involved when there is a chances of failure is high in that case a parallel conversion could be used the third one is the phased conversion in phased conversion the changes is made in a phase wise manner like suppose if we want to implement a new system in our institute instead of implementing it for the whole institute one by one in a different section like suppose first of all in the academic section after the academic section the account section after the account section the establishment section so there are the different sections and in that those sections one by one the system will get implemented so once the people get adjusted in the academic section they will tell you the problem whatever in the system it will get removed and later on it will get implemented in the another section so this one is another type of implementation manner again it is comparatively less risky because people are getting time to adapt to the new one the developers is also getting time to to remove any type of problem in from their system but the thing is there is a need to maintain a compatibility between the old system as well as in the new system so this is what the problem is the compatibility between the old and new system sometimes it is very difficult to make them compatible third one is trial and dissemination trial and dissemination is just like the previously taught pilot system a new system is implemented in a small area if it is successful the direct conversion will be used 
okay so first there will be a trial on a small geographical area based upon the results based upon the problems the system can be changed it can be updated and once it is successful in that space it will later on implemented on the whole organization so these are the different implementation strategies that could be used over here after that there is a project management okay so first i will give you the 10 minutes break and there are after yeah thereafter i will cover the rest of the presentation 10 minutes break
Now we are going to start with the next one, which is the project management. Project management is like in software engineering, there are the different models that are given. Okay, they are known as SDLC software development life cycle. So with the help of this SDLC, the phases of any of the project are defined. And there are several, several SDLC models that are used. Depending upon the type of project, depending upon the type of problem, depending upon the risk, the project could get selected. One of the popular one is the waterfall model. Waterfall model is shown in this way, okay? But why it is known as the waterfall model? Because just like a waterfall, it can flow only in one direction. So you cannot go back to the previous phase in this one, okay? So it starts with the feasibility study, whether it is feasible to do that project or not. Thereafter, there will be a requirement specification. What are the requirements that are expected from the system? Client's requirement will get listed. For that, we have learned rich picture, root definition, and other methods are also there. Once this is done, the next step is analysis. In this system, investigation and analysis is done means the designer will try to find out the different system requirements, whatever is the data requirement, whatever are the analysis requirement, all of these will be done. Thereafter, the system will get designed and later on it will be implemented and maintenance phase will get started. When the problem is well structured, the solution is well known in such type of project, the waterfall model is preferred. Why? because requirement specification is done only at the starting phase, not in the intermediate phases. The user is also not involved in the intermediate phases, only in the starting and the final implementation. So this one is used only when the problem is well structured. Another approach is called the prototype model. As the term suggests, prototyping. Prototyping means you will create a prototype, you will create a dummy product, the user will play will, with that dummy product, use that dummy product, and again give his or her requirement. So as you can see in the figure, user will give the basic requirement. Based upon those basic requirements, the developer will make the means analyst system to meet the user needs. Then there will be an experiment. It means that the analyst or the developer will make a system or a prototype or dummy system the user will perform the experiment. The user will use that one. And based upon the refinement, means again the user requirement will be taken. And again, this step is performed. So in this one, repeatedly the user requirements are taken. The system is developed and given to the user. It is not a formal system. It is just a dummy system. So that the basic requirement is done, fulfilled in that system. and Repeatedly, the user will use that one, will tell what are the problem in this one, what are not, we want such type of improvement and other things. So this is typically used when the people do not know anything about the system, okay? Like uh, suppose if there are any rocket plan or if there is any satellite missions which are completely new for that country, for those scientists, the prototyping model is usually used because it will give the chance to make the changes in the system. Now coming to the next part of this one. This one is all about the project implementation issues. The next one is about the open source software. So what is open source software? So, ma'am, source code is available for everyone. Yes. So, when the source code is available for everyone, it is called the open source software. And usually, these open source software are free. So, that's why there is a term FOSS is used, free and open source software. Although it is not mandatory that the open source software will be free always. But in general, it is free also. This discussion is all about the GIS software. I will not make a detailed discussion on this one, but will give you a brief overview on this one. You have to read by yourself. You know, 
when in any of the system if we go there is a requirement of gis software okay when we talk about the gis software there are few terms that are given over here these are the general terms not specific to the gis like cots codes shareware lightware freeware open source okay these are the different categories of softwares that are involved because in gis if you see when we are doing any of the process it will be done on the software so that's why we need to do a little bit learning on the gis software also the first category is cots codes codes means those software that are sold on a hard copy media like cd dvd shareware they are usually intended for a share sale after a trial period then lightware lightware means with a limited functionality so usually those software which are provided as a shareware also have some of the capabilities that are disabled so they are known as the lightware freeware free software but the copyright restriction open source software where the source code is provided and user agrees not to limit the distribution of improvements so these are the general terms which are related to the software if we see the evolution of gis software i am just reading it out because most of this is already covered in the gis history part <clears throat> so in the informative so sorry in the formative gis years gis software consistent simply of collection of computer routines that a skilled programmer could use to build an operational gis during this period each and every gis was unique in terms of its capabilities and the significant level of resources were required to create a working system as software engineering techniques advanced and the gis market grew in 1970s and 1980s demand increased for higher level application with a standard user interface in the late 1970s and early 1980s the standard means of communication communicating with the gis was to type in command lines what does this interface is known as what does this interface known as in which the user has to type it is known as cli command line yes command line interface okay like if you open the command prompt in that case you have to type the command so similarly at that time also the initial years the most of the software are based on cli so user interaction with the gis in telling typing instruction for example draw a topographic map query the attribute of a forest stand or object or summarize the length of highways in a project area a gis software package was a tool box for geo processing operators or commands that could be applied to data sets to create a new data set to make the software easier to use and more generic there were two key development in late 1980s first command line interface was supplemented and eventually largely replaced by graphical user interface gui or sometimes they are pronounced as gui these menu driven form based interfaces greatly simplified user interaction with the gis second thing is a customization capability was added to allow specific purpose applications to be created from the generic tool boxes In the last few years, a new method of software interaction has evolved that allows software system to communicate over the web using web service parroting. A web service is an application that exposes its function via a well-defined published interface that can be accessed over the web. You know, this part it will be covered in the next semester when we will learn about the GIS web GIS. Over there, you will find that instead of using such type of software. when the people have a web gis there are the web services that were used over there okay so over there we will learn about this thing that how the desktop gis is getting replaced by the web gis functionalities okay then software types there can be a professional desktop handheld component gis wear internet gis gis apps okay what does these thing means you know 
there is one classification which is important which is professional desktop and gis viewer like you know if i go for the gi arc gis software there are three different levels that comes over there arc arc view arc info arc editor okay so arc view arc editor and the best one is arc info there are the different level of functionalities which are given okay some will provide the basic functionality visualization facility and the basic functionality so that one is called the view level gis in arc gis we can say arc viewer then i will show you this one. yes you can see over here arc info arc editor arc view you know? concurrent user for the single user also there is arc info arc editor arc view so there are three levels okay arc view will give us the basic functionality a little bit more is given by the arc editor and full fledged functionality is given by the arc info so this one is the different term which is used by this software but in general the first the arc info is called the professional version of the software then second is called the means wait a minute
My voice is not coming. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma now, ma'am, from very long time it was not audible. Why haven't you sent anything? Slide change or at the middle of the school ball, I don't get a bit of slide change or I can't say nice on I upload me. GIS software cover हो गया था? Ma'am यहाँ से जैसे आपने start किया था thirty five thirty five page आठ के four दिन पार्टी okay यहाँ तक यहाँ से okay so यहाँ तक कि आठ info वाला जो आपने दिखाया था उसके बाद का फिर कुछ भी नहीं GIS software के जब हम बात करते हैं तो तीन versions available होते हैं yes, professional, desktop and viewer based अगर field में अगर कोई device जाता है उस case में handheld software डाले जाते हैं system में otherwise component GIS usually जब experienced users होते हैं और उनको अपना खुद का development होता है like आप लोग QGIS use करते हो तो उसमें Python development का option होता है तो उन सब केसेस के लिए है ये बाकी इंटरनेट जीआईएस अगर वेब जीआईएस यूज हो रहा है तो ऑनलाइन टूल्स अवेलेबल है उस केस के लिए एंड मोबाइल जीआईएस यूज हो रहा है तो उस केस में जीआईएस एप्स ओके हार्डवेयर क्वेश्चंस बताया गया कि अगर कोई भी जीआईएस सॉफ्टवेयर आ रहा है अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट वन हमको हार्डवेयर कंसीडर करना पड़ता है हार्डवेयर इज कंसीडर्ड एज़ वन ऑफ द कंपोनेंट ऑफ जीआईएस ओके सो अर्लियर यू हैव लर्नड अबाउट दिस थिंग दैट हार्डवेयर इज वन ऑफ द कंपोनेंट ऑफ जीआईएस Yes, as you have already learned that the hardware requirement involves a very good quality of screen, graphical display, then high processing power, memory, some peripheral devices like printers, plotters, and others. Okay. For the software, if any of the organization is planning to purchase any of the GIS software, they have to identify what are the requirement of software what types of functionality they are expecting from that one, whether the customization is provided or not, whether the documentation is available or not, whether the training is provided or not, whether we have to pay for that training or not. In case of any upgradation, whether that updates will be freely available or we have to pay for that one, whether the developers are planning for that software for a long time or they are going to discard in the near future or not, which type of operating system, what type of machine requirement. These are the several questions that are considered when we purchase any of the software. Thereafter, there are the open source software, which I've already covered, free softwares. Then we are coming to the functionalities of GIS software, the typical functionalities that are expected from any of the GIS software. First one is the visualization facility. Okay. We should be able to visualize the data set. This is the one of the basic requirement. Data creation, data editing. Data creation means you can perform the digitization or other things. If there is any editing requirement, how we are going to store the data, what are the different file formats in which the storage could be done, Data conflation. Conflation means the integration of data from different sources. So whether we can integrate the data from the different sources or not, okay? Like in QGIS, we are able to open the Landsat data, open street maps, your own data, and other things. Then data queries to select a data set. 
data analysis that is already covered, data transformations, then creation of the output. These are the typical functions of the GIS software. GIS software could be categorized in this manner. There can be a desktop GIS. There can be a DBMS, database management system. There can be mobile GIS, libraries and extensions, remote sensing software, exploratory spatial data analysis, web map server, server GIS, web GIS client. ये अलग अलग कैटेगरी के सॉफ्टवेयर है ऐसा नहीं कि आपको सबकी जरूरत पड़ती है जिसको जैसा रिक्वायरमेंट होता है जिस एप्लीकेशन में जो भी सॉफ्टवेयर चाहिए होता है उसके अकॉर्डिंग इनको हम लोग लेते हैं ठीक है डेस्कटॉप जीआईएस की बात करें तो आप लोग जो यूज कर रहे लाइक क्यू जीआईएस यूज कर रहे हैं आग जीआईएस यूज करें अगर ये सब एग्जांपल होते हैं डेस्कटॉप जीआईएस के डेस्कटॉप जीआईएस अगर एक हम प्रोप्राइटरी क्योंकि क्यू जीआईएस तो ओपन सोर्स है तो उसमें कुछ ऐसा नहीं है लेकिन अगर आप प्रोप्राइटरी में जाएंगे लाइसेंस बेस में जाएंगे जहां पर आपको पेमेंट करना है इन दैट केस आपको एक नहीं बल्कि तीन कैटेगरी जो पहले अभी डिस्कस करी गई व्यूअर एप्लीकेशन एडिटर एप्लीकेशन एंड प्रोफेशनल एडिशन ये अलग अलग एडिशन मिलते हैं व्यूअर में सबसे कम फंक्शनैलिटी एडिटर में उससे ज्यादा फंक्शनैलिटी एंड प्रोफेशन में प्रोफेशनल में ऑल द फंक्शनैलिटीज आती हैं तो ये प्रोप्राइटरी सॉफ्टवेयर के केस में होते हैं अगर हम डेस्कटॉप जी की बात करें जो हमारे लिए यूजफुल है यहाँ पर ओपन सोर्स में कौन कौन से हैं उनकी लिस्टिंग यहाँ पर दी गई है ग्रास क्यू जी आई एस एलविस यूडेक सागा ओपन जम माप विंडो जी वी सिक कॉस्मो आई जी ओ डेस्कटॉप और बिस जी आई एस तो ये बहुत सारे हैं अगर आप देखेंगे तो ज्यादातर आपको यूज करते हुए लोगों में क्यू जी आई एस एक बहुत कॉमन ऐप सॉफ्टवेयर है इंटरफेस भी बहुत अच्छा है प्लग भी बहुत सारे अवेलेबल हैं तो क्यू जी आई एस एक बहुत ही यूज होने वाला है इल्विस इल्विस भी कई बार स्पेशली रिमोट सेंसिंग में हम लोग इल्विस को यूज करते हैं यूडेक में भी कुछ फंक्शनैलिटीज मिलती हैं बट यूडेक का नेक्स्ट सेमेस्टर में आप लोग का लेबोरेटरी जब रहेगा तो वहां पर यूडेक की कुछ फंक्शनैलिटीज को कंप्लीट यूडेक हम लोग नहीं यूज करेंगे बट यस यूडेक की कुछ फंक्शनैलिटीज को वहां पर हम लोग यूज करके देखेंगे किस तरीके से ये सॉफ्टवेयर यूज होता है बाकी अलग अलग कंट्रीज में अपने क्योंकि आग जी आई एस एक ऐसा सॉफ्टवेयर था जो बहुत ही पॉपुलर था और रैम्पेंटली यूज होता था लेकिन लाइसेंसिंग कॉस्ट को लेकर के उसमें इन्वॉल्व होने वाले मनी को लेकर के कई जगहों पर कई कंट्रीज में उसके एक ऑल्टरनेटिव को तलाशने की कोशिश करी गई और उसी ऑल्टरनेटिव के तौर पर कई सारी जगहों पर सॉफ्टवेयर बनाए गए तो ऐसा नहीं है कि सारे सॉफ्टवेयर सारी फंक्शनैलिटीज ऑफर करते हो कई सॉफ्टवेयर एक पर्टिकुलर रिक्वायरमेंट के लिए बनाए गए लाइक ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के सोल्यूशन के तौर पर बनाए गए तो वो एक स्पेसिफिक सेट ऑफ फंक्शनैलिटीज ही ऑफर करते हैं तो इन सभी ऑप्शन में इनका थोड़ा थोड़ा डिटेल आगे के स्लाइड्स में दिया गया है वो आप लोग अपने एंड पर पढ़ेंगे बट उन सभी सॉफ्टवेयर्स में से एक सॉफ्टवेयर जो आज के टाइम में बहुत यूज हो रहा है वो है क्यू जी आई एस सॉफ्टवेयर ओके इसका शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन हर एक सॉफ्टवेयर का यहाँ पर दिया हुआ है इसको आप लोग अपने एंड से देखेगा नेक्स्ट वन इज स्पेशल डेटा बेस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम ये भी बहुत यूजफुल है ऑल दो हम लोग ने इस पर काम नहीं किया आप लोग को इसका एग्जाम्पल हमने पहले भी दिखाया है पीजी एडमिन मैनेजमेंट टूल फॉर पोस्ट जीआरई एसक्यूएल डेटाबेस के केस में ये पर्टिकुलर सॉफ्टवेयर प्रेफर्ड होता है ऑल दो अगेन कई सारे ऑप्शंस यहाँ पे भी अवेलेबल होते हैं जैसे स्पेशल लाइट तो यहाँ पर एक स्पेशल लाइट हमारे पास में अवेलेबल है माई एसक्यूएल स्पेशल अवेलेबल है बट लिमिटेड फंक्शनैलिटी इसके साथ आते हैं फुल फ्लेज फंक्शनैलिटी के लिए यही सॉफ्टवेयर हमारे पास में ओपन सोर्स में अवेलेबल है 
अगेन आप अगर ज्यादातर जगहों पर अगर कहीं पर डेटाबेस लगेगा तो यही डेटाबेस पोस्ट जी आई डेटाबेस को ही हर जगह पर यूज किया जाता है क्यों क्योंकि एक बहुत पुराना सॉफ्टवेयर है वेल स्टैब्लिश सॉफ्टवेयर है एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ फंक्शनैलिटीज अगर आप देखेंगे तो आपको इस सॉफ्टवेयर में मिल जाती है इन सब का ज्यादातर यूज जब आप वेब इंटरफेस वेब जी पे जाते हैं और वहां पर बनाते हैं क्योंकि वहां पर आपको डेटाबेस कनेक्टिविटी देनी पड़ती है सिस्टम की तो वहां पर इस तरीके के सॉफ्टवेयर यूज किए जाते हैं अभी जितना जी आई आप लोगों ने पढ़ा है उसमें अभी इसकी रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं है बट यस वेब एप्लीकेशन बनाएंगे तो वहां पर इसको यूज करना पड़ता है देन मोबाइल जी मोबाइल जी में यही एक होता है कि अभी तक डेस्कटॉप जी में आपके पास में एक बड़ी स्क्रीन होती है जिसमें कंप्लीट डिटेल्स आप वहां पर देख सकते हैं ओके मोबाइल जी आई एस के इसमें स्मॉल स्क्रीन होती है लिमिटेड स्क्रीन साइज लिमिटेड बैटरी पावर लिमिटेड इंटरनेट इन सब को देखते हुए एप्लीकेशन जब जी की डेवलप करी जाती है तो वो सेपरेट करी जाती है तो यहाँ पर जी आई भी आते हैं जिनको यूज किया जाता है या एग्जिस्टिंग सॉफ्टवेयर के डेस्कटॉप जी के मोबाइल वर्जन भी आते हैं तो उनको यूज किया जाता है देन एक्सप्लोरेटरी स्पेशल डेटा एनालिसिस सॉफ्टवेयर जो स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस होती हैं ठीक है थीके? वहां पर इस तरीके के सॉफ्टवेयर्स को यूज किया जाता है मैं जियोडा एक बहुत ही पॉपुलर सॉफ्टवेयर है जैसे क्लस्टर एनालिसिस आउटलेयर एनालिसिस हॉटस्पॉट डिटेक्शन इन सब के लिए जो यूज होता है वो इस कैटेगरी में आता है एक्सप्लोरेटरी स्पेशल डेटा एनालिसिस टूल्स में इनमें जियोडा बहुत ही पॉपुलर सॉफ्टवेयर है अगर स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस इस तरीके की कोई करनी है तो उस केस में इस सॉफ्टवेयर को यूज किया जाता है मेन पर्पस इस पूरे डिस्कशन का ये है कि एटलीस्ट आप लोग इन सॉफ्टवेयर के नेम से अवेयर हो जाए थोड़ा बहुत उसकी कैटेगरी से अवेयर हो जाए कि किस तरीके के सॉफ्टवेयर ये यूज होते हैं कि कल कोई आपसे अगर पूछे कि अगर आपको स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस करनी है तो कौन सा सॉफ्टवेयर यूज हो सकता है तो एटलीस्ट आप इतना तो बता दो कि जियोडा नाम का एक सॉफ्टवेयर है जो प्रोबेबली यूज हो सकता है प्लस अपना आप उसको सर्च करेंगे और बाकी आप ढूंढ सकते हैं तो ये कैटेगरीज एग्जिस्ट करती हैं इसका नॉलेज होना चाहिए रिमोट सेंसिंग सॉफ्टवेयर आप लोग ऑलरेडी अवेयर होंगे इसमें से कुछ यहाँ पर दिए गए हैं ऑसिम इंटर इमेज ई फोटो ऑप्टिक्स एलविस भी यूज होता है बाकी प्रोप्राइटरी में अडास इमेजिन है वो एक बहुत ही पॉपुलर सॉफ्टवेयर है लेकिन प्रोप्राइटरी है जो कि रिमोट सेंसिंग में यूज होता है देन सॉफ्टवेयर लाइब्रेरीज सॉफ्टवेयर लाइब्रेरीज क्या होते हैं कई बार कुछ लाइब्रेरीज ऑलरेडी कोई फंक्शंस यूज होते हैं तो उनका कोड सेपरेटली प्रिपेयर करके लाइब्रेरी में रखा जाता है वहां से लाइब्रेरी से उन फंक्शन को यूज किया जाता है तो उसमें अलग अलग लाइब्रेरीज अवेलेबल हैं इनके नाम के भी नॉलेज आपको होनी चाहिए जी डाल रास्टर एनालिसिस के लिए ओ जी आर वेक्टर एनालिसिस के लिए क्रॉस डॉट फोर प्रोजेक्शन के लिए यूज होता है जे टी एस टोपोलॉजी स्यूट जो कि जावा टोपोलॉजी स्यूट के लिए यहाँ पर यूज हो रहा है देन जियोस जोमेट्री इंजन ओपन सोर्स तो ये अलग अलग कुछ जावा बेस्ड हैं कुछ सी प्लस प्लस बेस्ड हैं ये अलग अलग लाइब्रेरीज हैं आपको इनका यूज अभी नहीं करना है क्योंकि आप तो ऑलरेडी सॉफ्टवेयर यूज करते हो बट डेवलपर्स एंड पर या एडवांस यूजर्स के लिए ये सारी चीजें आती हैं ठीक है तो यहाँ पर हमारा सिलेबस जो होता है वो कम्प्लीट होता है इसमें एक पीपीटी अभी भी बची है आप लोग की जी आई एस ट्वेल्व जी आई एस एप्लीकेशन एंड केस स्टडीज ये आप अपने से ही पढ़ेंगे और इसको जरूर से इस स्लाइड को पढ़िएगा क्योंकि इसमें जितना भी हम लोग का अभी तक कवर्ड है उनकी एप्लीकेशन आप इस पर्टिकुलर कंटेंट में पाएंगे ठीक है तो इस टॉपिक को आप लोग अपने एंड पर पढ़िएगा अदरवाइज सिलेबस हमारी एंड से आज इस टॉपिक पे जा करके कंप्लीट होता है आप लोग के एंड से कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो पूछ लीजिए 